Hello, this presentation is going to be all about some of the most common birds that you're going to be able to see and hear in your yard and in your neighborhood. So what you're going to need to be able to do this presentation is a copy of the bird note chart. You can either have it up on your computer and be ready to type into it like a Word document, or you can have printed it off and be ready to take notes by hand. For today's assignment, all you need to do is post your completed notes. So let's learn about some birds. This is the tufted titmouse, and it is well known by this lovely tuft of feathers that it has up on its head. It has a blue-gray coloration on the back and a white belly, and then it has this buff patch right here underneath the wing. So those are the field marks of the tufted titmouse. Its call sounds like it's saying, Peter, 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 Peter. Listen right here. And this call tends to be really loud and kind of cut through, so you're pretty well able to hear it. That's the tufted titmouse. This next one is the northern flicker. So this picture is showing a male northern flicker, which is a type of woodpecker. And it's got that red patch back on the nape of its neck back here. And it has this black crescent shape on its chest, on its breast area. But the way I can tell that it's a male and not a female is because the males also have this black mustache right here as opposed to the females that don't have this one. So that is your northern flicker. So this next woodpecker is the red-bellied woodpecker. And I know, I know, it doesn't look like it has much of a red belly, but there is a little patch of red feathers right there below, um, in between its legs, at the bottom of its belly. And um, all of the woodpeckers, have a black and white motif going on. They've got black and white, and then they always have a red piece of flare. So in this case, he's got a red mohawk. That's the red-bellied woodpecker. He's not called the red-headed woodpecker because there's another woodpecker that its entire head is red. So that's the red-headed woodpecker. This is the red-bellied woodpecker. There you go. This next one is the downy woodpecker, and it's probably the one that you're going to see most often in this area. It's small. It's about six inches and again, it's got the black and white coloration with a red piece of flare. In this case, it's kind of like a red yarmulke right at the back of its, of its head it's wearing. It's got a little red patch right there. So that's the downy woodpecker. The next one is the hairy woodpecker. Notice it looks very similar to the downy woodpecker. It is a little bit larger. So this one is nine inches like that. Sorry, there we go. It's like that big instead of that big. So nine inches and it still has the red yarmulke. The other difference between the hairy woodpecker and the downy woodpecker is the fact that it has this much longer beak. So if you look at the downy woodpecker, it had a much shorter beak. The beak was only about half the size of its head. And in this case, the hairy woodpecker, its beak is as long as its head. This is the red-winged blackbird. This one is named very appropriately for its red wing and black body. This is the male of the species. The female would be all brown, but kind of have the same shape of its body. And the juvenile males, uh, which means like the the ones, uh, the kind of teenage males or when they're first born up until when they're an adult as they're growing up, they have, they have brown feathers, but they do have the red shoulder that the, that the adult does. So that's how you tell the difference between the juvenile male and the adult male red-winged blackbird. This next one is a chipping sparrow. So there are four sparrows. And the way you can tell the difference between the sparrows is by the coloration 
on their head. They all have different things going on. They're all pretty much the same size. They're all kind of small brown birds, but they all have one thing that kind of like sets them apart. So the chipping sparrow, it has this chestnut head and a black line through its eye. So um, I remember it as chipping sparrow has the chestnut head. So chipping sparrow, chestnut, it's kind of this reddish brown color here. So that's the chipping sparrow. This is another sparrow. This one is the white throated sparrow. And as you can see, it's also just kind of a small brown bird, but it has a few distinct characteristics that let you tell it apart. The first is that it does have, as its name suggests, a white throat. So it has that white throat right underneath of its beak. It also has a bright yellow spot right above its eye right here. So the bright yellow right here and the white right here. And this call, the best description of it that we can come up with is that it sounds like the Mockingjay call from the Hunger Games when Katniss is making that call to signal um, and all the birds repeat her. This call sounds very much like that. Here you go. So except for the fact that it doesn't go down to that last note like the Mockingjay call does, it's very much the Hunger Games call. So that's a good way to remember this one. That is the white throated sparrow. Next, we have the house sparrow. So again, small brown bird, but the difference with the house sparrow is I remember it because it has a gray head, like, and I remember it because houses have gray roofs. So you've got this house sparrow with the gray head and then he's got a big black beard. Um, some of my students in the past have called him the old man bird. So if you like that as a way to remember it, that if that works for you, that's great. So yeah, big black beard and gray head for the house sparrow. Next, we have the song sparrow, and this one is just all brown. Um, a lot of people think this is the cutest of the sparrows. Um, but it's just all brown. There's no other coloration on it that would that would really um, make it stand out. So the one that's just all brown is a song sparrow. Next, we have the northern cardinal. This is our state bird. And this is the only one that is going to be bright red. So the fact that it is just this bright red coloration is going to tell you, hey, it's a cardinal. The other thing is it does have this black face mask, which is very distinctive. Now this is the male. Females would be mostly brown in color, but they would still have kind of a little bit of red up kind of on its around the face and the head area, but their body would be more brown. So for this one, the call sounds like it's saying, cheer, cheer, what, 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 cheer, cheer. Listen, here we go. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it also does a part where it goes birdie, 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 birdie. It's not in this recording, but it sometimes sounds like birdie, 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 birdie. So that's your Northern Cardinal. The next one is the Blue Jay. And again, just like the Cardinal, the most obvious part about this is the bright blue coloration. So Blue Jay, bright blue. And this one, actually, it's called kind of sounds like it's saying its name. So it has um, this call where it says, Jay. Jay. And then it has this liquid Queedle. Queedle. Okay, so let's just add J, J, Queedle. Jay, 
J. That is your blue jay. This one is the dark-eyed junco. So the dark-eyed junco is actually a, a relative of a sparrow. It doesn't have sparrow in its name, but it is in the sparrow family. And dark-eyed juncos have this black kind of ski mask. It's like they're wearing a, um, a ski mask over their head. Back is brown and the belly is white, but then that head is black. And that's how you can tell that it's a dark eyed junco. Next, we have the Eastern Tohi. So the Eastern Tohi is the one that people most confuse with the dark eyed junco, but the Eastern Tohi is actually a little bit larger um, than, the, than the junco. And also, if you notice, this one has a black head, back, and tail. So instead of just the black ski mask, they're like wearing a black hooded cape. So they've got black um, on their whole back. It's also another name for this bird is the rufous sided tohi because right here, this rufous, this red color that's here on the side, um, that is another reason it gets its name, rufous sided tohi because it has that red patch on its side. So black head, back and tail, white belly, red patch on the side. The call for this one sounds like it's saying, Drink your tea, drink your tea. Listen. That is the Eastern Tohi. Next is the Carolina Wren. So the Carolina Wren is a brown bird. And the most distinguishing thing about this one is its white eyebrow. It looks it's got that white eyeliner, a white eyeshadow that's going down the side. So that stark white line that's right above its eye. That's the most characteristic thing for the Carolina Wren. Um, the call for this one, people hear two different things. So I'll tell you both. It's got a definite rhythmic cadence to it. And so people either hear tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea. Or some people hear tea burger, tea burger, tea burger, tea, tea burger, tea burger, tea burger, tea. So whichever one you hear, that is up to you. You can write down either one on your notes. And this part of the call I hear all the time. But sometimes they'll only do, birds will only be part of a call, not the whole thing. So that gets a little bit confusing out in the field. You have to be able to kind of recognize the parts of the call, like just that. They'll do that call all the time without doing the cheeburger, cheeburger first. But cheeburger, 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 chee. Cheeburger, 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 chee. That's your Carolina Red. This is your Carolina Chickadee. So the chickadee is affectionately known as either Oreo face or skunk face, whichever one you'd like to call it, that's fine. So it's got this black, white, black pattern on its face. That's the um, Carolina chickadee. And its call sounds like it's saying, well, it, it has a note pattern, high, low, high, low, low, high, low, high, low, low. And then it goes chickadee, dee, 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 chickadee, dee, dee, dee. So listen, see if you can hear that. There you go. That is the Carolina chickadee. Next, we have the American robin. So this is also when I was growing up in New Jersey, we called these robin redbreast. So obviously the biggest thing about the American Robin is this big red belly. 
And they are usually a ground dwelling bird. So, I mean, they can go up in the trees and they can fly and everything, but a lot of the time you'll find them searching for their food on the ground. So, and they're a pretty large bird. Um, so you probably will see this one. So um, the call for the American Robin sounds like it's saying, cheerly, cheer up, cheerly, cheer up, cheerly, cheer up. Let me write that for you while it's playing. Cheerly, cheer up, cheerly, cheer up. And that is the American Robin. This next one is the European Starling. And the European Starling is actually an invasive species in Virginia um, and in most of the United States. Um, but the European Starling has a really funny introduction story. Um, basically, in the mid 1800s, this guy just decided that wouldn't it be cool if all of the birds that were mentioned in Shakespeare's works were all found in Central Park. Hey, that would be cool. So he went and collected all of the birds that were ever mentioned in a Shakespeare sonnet or Shakespeare play, and he brought them all and released them all in Central Park. And there's one Shakespeare play that mentions starlings in a couple of lines. Well, little did he know, he started a population that then spread all over the Eastern seaboard, and now they are an invasive species. But the European starling is characterized by this really bright yellow beak. And one way you can think about it is because it's got a black body and then it's got all these light spots on it. So it's kind of like a starry night. So European starling, it's got a starry sky or a starry night on its back. This is the common grackle, or the common grackle, sorry, which is one um, that is sometimes confused with the starling. But as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the starling because it's the 12 inches instead of the seven and a half to eight and a half that the European starling was. And common grackles are cool because they have like an iridescent metallic sheen to their body that, that kind of, um, it's like that when you have an oil slick like on your driveway or on top of water, it kind of gets that metallic sheen. That's what the feathers of the common grackle look like. They are iridescent. This is the brown-headed cowbird. Here's another one where its name is completely appropriate because brown-headed cowbird. This is a Cooper's hawk, and it's one of the most common hawks that we have in our area, so you're likely to see it. If you see a hawk, it's probably a Cooper's hawk. But one of the things you can look for while it's flying is the pattern on its tail. So on its tail feathers, it looks like it has basically black and white stripes on its tail. And so that's very characteristic of the Cooper's hawk. The American crow, this one is one that most students know before coming into this class, very common bird and very visually easy to see because it's so large. Um, and then the call is again, something that a lot of students already know. <coughs> oh, oh. One thing to keep in mind about the American crow, there's another crow that we have in this area called the fish crow. If any of you live by water, you might hear a fish crow and they're, they've kind of a cool call. They sound like they're saying, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So if you hear that one, that's a fish crow. Here is the morning dove. Notice how the word morning in morning dove is pronounced, is spelled M-O-U-R-N because it is sounds very mournful, like it is crying or very sad. Um, and so when you hear that 
for the call, you will realize it's not morning like night and morning, but morning as in sadness morning. Um, and it's just, it's got a dove body uh, with these black spots on the back. That's one of the field marks, the black spots on the back of the body. And it has a call that I'm sure a lot of you have heard before, and you probably thought it was an owl, but it's actually the morning dove. So here, let me, let me play it for you. But it sounds like an owl, not an owl, the morning dove. This is the white breasted nuthatch, and it's got kind of a blue gray back and a white belly. But this whole picture where it shows it upside down on the tree. That is actually very characteristic of this bird. They will actually move up and down the tree with their head facing the ground. That's just how they hunt in the wild. So it's shown in this picture upside down. It was in your coloring book, your bird coloring book upside down. And that is a behavior that you will see in nature a lot for this bird. And lastly, we have the American goldfinch, the most obvious part of this is the bright yellow color um so american gold finch so it's got that bright yellow color okay so those are all of your birds and 10 of the calls that we are just using to get you started and so now you should follow the directions on how to post your completed notes either on teams or on view based on your teacher's directions